how many of you have shared information to a client and they didn't trust you in that moment and it ended up costing you business? Okay. How much has it costed you? That's a hard question to really answer. In this presentation, I'm going to teach you an influential strategy that's going to build 10x more trust with your clients, with your team. It's going to blow up your brand, your marketing, and your sales. And this influential strategy is the power of storytelling. Okay? Why must you learn storytelling? Why is this so important? Okay? Facts tell and stories sell. Okay, I'm going to say that a lot. Write that down, guys. Facts tell and stories sell. Okay, and I hear this all the time from business owners. My the customers don't listen to me. My employees don't listen to me. It's like, yeah, because you just tell them facts. Okay, we don't listen to facts. We pay attention to stories. Okay, the biggest problem that I see with leaders out in the world is they go through all these experiences. This mentorship, training, certifications, decades of experience. And after they go through all these experiences, then when they're in front of that person, they shortchange their transformation. They just tell them the facts that they learned through all those experiences. And they don't listen. I have, I have a saying that I, uh, that I tell people, okay? It's called, fuck your information. No one gives a shit about your information, okay? How did I get into storytelling? It's because I wanted to be more influential. I wanted to build more trust, connection, and love with people because I really wanted to help them, but they weren't listening to my facts and figures, okay? Facts tell and stories sell, okay? Facts tell and stories sell, okay? We all have a story to share. We all have experiences to share. Okay, and through these stories, okay, we're able to influence people more through the storytelling. If we listen earlier to the presentations, right? Did we listen to their facts and figures? No, we listened to the stories. How many people teared up when we started to share that story? Yeah, did that build more trust? Did that build more connection? Okay. And so I've worked with a lot of leaders. I've coached for a lot of years. And what I've really noticed about a lot of businesses is that they're, when they say they're good at marketing, they're not really good at marketing. Okay? What they're good at is maybe they have a good personality or they have a good service or they've been around for so long okay, that they're just dominating the market, but they're not really good at marketing. It's kind of like when I was coaching athletes. My favorite athletes to coach were the ones that had shitty ass fundamentals. Those were my favorite ones. They had a lot of talent, okay? They had this natural born talent, but they had shitty ass fundamentals, okay? Why did I love coaching them? Is because now if you start to get fundamentals going with their natural talent, now they're gonna be to the next gen. Not just good, not just great, they're gonna be one of the next gen athletes. And so when I was working with athletes, Infielders, that's who played sports growing up? Raise your hand. Who played baseball? Raise your hand. You baseball players? Awesome. Okay, you guys might be able to help me out with this one. So when I was working with uh, infielders, I was like, okay, we're going to fill ground balls. Okay, but literally all they do is they just hit ground balls. Stay in front of it. Get in front of it. Don't be afraid. That's not the shit. Okay, we, we got to go to the next level. So where do we start? Set the ball on the ground. Okay, and we're going to learn the fundamentals to building a ground ball. Because at the next level, guys, okay, if you want to throw athletes, throw players out at the next level, you gotta be good. Okay, if you don't have those fundamentals down, then you're not gonna be able to throw those guys out. And the same applies in your business. Okay, your clients are smart, true or false. Your customers are smart. They're Googling that shit before you even get there. Okay, they already know some of the answers. Okay, so it's not okay just to be average. You have to be as great as you possibly can. So I'm getting them in front of it. What's the first step to fill the ground ball? Charging, right? That's what we're talking literally. No, it starts way before that. Okay, what's our starting position? We got to be like this. Are you ready to fill the? Are you ready to fill the ball? I'd ask my athletes, Do you even want the ball? Do you even want the ball hits you? Do you even want the customer? Do you even want the client? How bad do you want the client and customer? How bad do you want the ball to be hit to you? Okay, so the first thing is I gotta get them. Do you want the ball? Okay, starting position. The ball's hit, what's the first thing we do? We're talking literally charge it. No, we gotta get around the ball. 
Okay, we got to see the trajectory of the bounce. The first step is getting around the ball, come up to it, we're going to start to come down like an airplane. Okay, right, left, field. Separate, so that field, separate, right, left, throw. Okay, set it down again. We're going to do that all day. Get around the ball, right, left, right, left, throw. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, we're going to do that all day long. Get around the ball, right, left, field, right, left, throw. Okay, if you can't build the ground ball fundamentally right, right there, then it makes no sense in just hitting your ground balls. My favorite, my favorite excuse that I hear, well, it made a bad bounce. It doesn't matter. If you had your fundamentals down, it wouldn't matter if it was a bad bounce or not. Okay, does your clients give you bad bounces? Does your customers throw shit at you? You're like, shit, I don't know what to say. And then you come up with a fact or some information, and it doesn't really influence them. Okay, and I'll say this next thing, you guys already know this. No one cares how much you know until... Yeah, information doesn't do that. Okay? Information doesn't do that. So we got to get better at the fundamentals of influencing people. Okay? And the fundamentals of influencing people is to tell stories. Facts tell... Facts tell, story sell. Who's excited to hear Grant Cardone? Does he have lots of stories? Does he have lots of experiences that he shares? Yeah, I love Grant Cardone. Dude, I'm gonna tell you something that your uncle did it, man. You gotta get that jet, dude, and you gotta have someone else pay for that jet. Right? Yeah, I love Uncle G. What's your favorite thing that he says? Who's got my money, man? Today I got your money, okay? Because I'm going to teach you how to take this into your business to blow up your marketing, your branding, and your sales. Okay? No, so has a great story. Uh, it's Tom Brady. I'm actually, uh, I have a distant blood relation fourth cousin. Not close enough to go hang out with him, but there's a blood relation there. And even if you, if even if there wasn't any blood relation, I love Tom Brady about who he is. People call him the goat, and he actually doesn't like that. He doesn't like when people call him the goat. Because he goes, there's other great players. I just happen to play one of the most important parts of the football team, which is the quarterback. He was seventh string when he came on the college. Are you going to play at all being seventh string? Okay, he's going to the combine. And some of the best people in the industry are saying he's not good, he has a weak arm, he gets knocked down easy, how would you determine yourself if people were saying that about you and your industry? But he fought through all that 199th pick, doesn't even play his first year, he only goes in because the player ahead of him gets injured, and he said this, he said, if I go in, they're not taking me off that field. Eight super, seven Super Bowls later, guys, and the ten of them. Okay, when people hate Tom Brady, it's like, why? He had no talents, but yet he turned something from nothing because he was able to work hard. Every opportunity he took to get better, he got better. And that's why I tell business owners, there's an awesome opportunity for you to get better, to learn how to tell stories, but yet you're not doing it. He doesn't want to be called the GOAT. He's not the GOAT. I think he's the goal. The greatest of all leaders. And what leaders do better than anyone else is they know how to speak, they know how to share stories, they know how to inspire people. Okay, and that's what I'm good at. That's what I'm, I, I'm good at taking people's experiences and turning them into stories that inspire people. I'm a branding mentor, coach's coach, and I teach leaders about power storytelling. We have an agency where we help people scale their businesses for a fraction of the price with our team versus in uh, having someone bring in house and do it themselves. Okay, I've been coaching collectively for 18 years. I've worked with tons of businesses, athletes, influencers, multimillionaires, CEOs. I've literally sat down with people 18,000 times. If you do the math conservatively, I've sat down in 18,000 one-on-one -on -one sessions. And I'd have to be deaf, dumb, blind, and stupid to not see that there's a pattern that separates the good from the great, and what I refer to the next gen. 
And it all starts with their story. All right? And I'm sure a lot of leaders in this room could say that. Everybody has a story. Who's heard some crazy stories over the years, right? Okay? It all, it all starts with a story. Okay? And these stories impact our life and how we live it. Our stories impact the lives of our employees around it, and they impact our customers. Okay, so it's in our best interest to become as amazing as we can as storytelling. Okay, and that's how I got started in what I was doing. When I was younger, I wanted to be a professional athlete. Who wanted to be a professional athlete when they were younger? Why did you want to be a professional athlete? Because it's fun, and it's easy, and you get paid a lot of money. That's what I want to do in my life. I want to do something that's fun and easy, and I want to make a shitload of money while I'm doing it. Okay, so I remember when I was younger, I was actually watching Tom Brady. I'm like, man, if I can't play sports, I want to do something close. I want to be a personal trainer. So that is actually what ignited me into the coaching industry. And as I was a personal trainer and I started working with people, okay, I noticed that a lot of them weren't doing what I say they were doing. And the reason why they weren't doing it is because they had these beliefs that were contradicting what I was telling them to do. Okay? And these beliefs all started with their identity. Okay? What's an identity? Okay? An identity is what's your deepest core beliefs about who you are? Okay, everyone has an identi identity in this room, and your identity is started the day you were conceived in your mom's womb. Okay, and we'll talk about the science of that in just in a, in a little second. Okay, but that's where we start to generate our identity about who we believe we are. Some people say, well, I'm just not good enough. I'm just not smart enough. Oh, I'm not the person that speaks on stage. I'm not the leader. I'm not this. Or I am this. I'm bad. I'm too stupid. Right? So they didn't realize that those actions and behaviors were following their beliefs. And so I started to help them break through these subconscious beliefs that they didn't realize that they're holding on to, okay, that was limiting them in their life, okay? Your identity is like a car limiter, okay? I remember when I was younger, I was drunk. I think every guy's done this. You get in the car and you see how fast, how fast can this car go, right? And so I got this huge straightaway I'm with my friend. We're going to the baseball game. I was like, let's fucking do it, man. And we go, get up 100, 105, 110, and then all of a sudden the car just like shuts off. And I'm like, what? So we're still going, but it shuts off, and the car doesn't turn back on until I hit 80 miles per hour. It's a, it's a speed limiter. And, you're, and some people's identities, it's a speed limiter. You get to a certain money amount, or a certain team amount, or whatever it is in your life, and that speed limiter kicks on internally, subconsciously, and you don't know it, and then it holds you back until you get back to where you're comfortable with your identity. So I started helping people break through these things. And as I started to do, I had other personal trainers come over and say, dude, how do you do that? How'd you build your business? Okay, how'd you get clients, all these things? So I naturally just started helping them. And as I started helping them, I noticed that they were struggling with the exact same things that my clients were. And that was they didn't know the identity of their business. And the identity of their business is their brand. It's your mark. It's your message. Branding is so much deeper than just a fancy logo, okay, or a fancy graphic. It's so much deeper than that, okay. Steve Jobs didn't build Apple. Okay, Steve Jobs built and branded Steve Jobs and he called it Apple. Okay, Steve Jobs believed in thinking different. Okay, and I love what you're saying earlier, you can't connect your business from who you are and what your identity is. And so as I started to get into branding, I realized the best way to really share who you are to the world is through a story. Okay, facts tell. And story sells. So if we really want to sell that identity to the world and who you are, your values, what you believe, what's important to you, okay, we can tell people that hard work is our value. We can tell people that we never give up. Okay? Well, that's really hard to tell people that. If we shared a story, the story would say all of that without even having to say that. Okay. The, the game changer in my business, though, is, is years ago, um, I was out in the hallway at an NSA event. It's called National Speakers Association, the one you listen to, not the one that we listen to you, right? People can use those two. Okay. 
And I was talking to the past president, and I was telling him what I was doing in my business. I think everyone needs a mentor, someone they can go to, bounce right ideas off. Coaching's changed my life, and that's why I believe in coaching. And so I was in the hallway with him, and I was telling him what I was doing, and he said something that, that changed my life that day. He said, you know what I've noticed over the years? Is I've noticed it takes about eight years for people to find the real, true, authentic brand. And it just hit me. Wow. Like, yeah, that's taken me eight years to really find my brand, which is next gen. And then I went home that night and I thought about it. I thought about it. Why did it take me eight years? How could it, how could I do this sooner? So I reverse engineered the process through tons of coaching work, tons of journaling, and I've been able to take that branding process from eight years to eight weeks. And people ask me, well, well, where do you start? You start with your deepest life beliefs. Why do you exist right now? Why are we on this floating planet amongst trillions of galaxies? Okay, what's, what's the meat? So why are we here? What's the purpose of being living here? And so when we start to build our business and our life around our deepest life beliefs, we start to feel more confident in it. When someone says, I lack confidence in my business, basically, you lack belief. And so we started at some surface level of our brand, and we really didn't dive to a deep level. Okay? What percent? So let me ask you guys a question. Let's back up real quick. What is, let's talk about what is influence. Okay? What is true influence? Shout out. What is influence? Awareness. Making an impact. Right? Okay? Here is the definition of influence. I want you to write this down. It's not how people feel about you. It's how do people feel about themselves when they're around you. Okay? Do they feel inspired? Do they feel smart? Do they feel like they can achieve anything in this world? Okay? Why do we like being around these big influencers? Because they make us feel good about ourselves. Okay, that's what true influence is. And I have a mantra. I love myself the most when I'm around traps. I like who I am the most when I'm around traps. I feel the most inspired when I'm around traps. Okay, how do you influence people? Okay, and a lot of a lot of people they don't know, okay, because it's so subconscious. What percent of our actions come from our conscious level versus our subconscious level. Okay? What percentage? Okay, here, here I'll, I'll start to yell some facts. I hear, well, 60% of our actions and behaviors come from our subconscious mind, and 40% conscious, and I hear 50-50, okay? And here's what studies show. 5% of your actions come from a conscious level, which means 95% come from an unconscious level. What does that mean? You're fucking zombies, that's what it means. Okay, the zombie apocalypse is already amongst us. And it's getting worse with, with our, we're getting hypnotized by all these phones. Okay, and that's being generous because I've seen some studies that show less than 1% of your actions come from your conscious level. Okay, so subconscious below your awareness. If you were to pause right now and look at your body, okay, I don't think you consciously meant to do that. I don't think you consciously meant to move your leg like that or move your arms. You just moved how you felt. Okay, we're feelers. Okay, we're animals. We're homo sapiens. Okay, we move based upon how we feel. Okay, your customers, your clients, they react, they respond off how they feel, not how they think. How they feel, okay? Transformation starts in the body. The body, or excuse me, transformation starts in the mind, okay? But the body has more influence. So if you were to look at our central nervous system, it kind of looks like a flower, like a tree, right? So we always give so much attention to the way the person thinks or what they believe, but what really caused that? It was all the sensations coming from the roots. Okay? This is your root, your body. Okay, so we, we move based upon how we feel. Okay, body language. What percent of uh, communication comes from body language? 
Okay, 10%? What do you think? 70%. Yeah, and depending on what studies you show, so less, so let's do the math, so 10%, okay, less than 10% of communication comes from logic and words. Which brings me to my next point. Fuck your information. Okay, another 30% comes from the way you say it, the volume. So, did you whisper? How did you say it? Okay, and then the rest of the body language. Okay, have you ever met with somebody like, uh, I don't know, I just, something didn't feel right. Okay. 600 words circulate through our brain every single minute. We speak 200. If you're a woman, I'm sure you could beat those odds sometimes. Okay. But where do the rest of those words go? So we had 600, we spoke 200. Where do the rest of the words go? Hey, okay, Einstein said this energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transferred. Okay, those rest of those words, they go into your body. Okay. If you're a leader, you must study body language. Okay. You have to study body language. A good book is what every body is saying. Yeah, that's a really good book. Okay. So when we communicate a story, okay, we're adding so much emotion to this. Okay? We're getting, we're communicating directly with how we communicate as human beings. Okay? So if we really want to influence people, we got to connect with the way that we actually make decisions as a human being. Okay? Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I want to talk to you about the hero's journey. Okay. So now the question is, well, how do I tell a story, Travis? What's the best way to share a story? So I call this the next gen hero's journey. So it was named by a guy named by Joseph Campbell. He noticed that there's a pattern, a repeatable pattern that happens with heroes and leaders. And he essentially scripted this pattern. Okay, so when we want to be the hero of our business, or be looked upon as the leader, okay, the way to be looked upon as a leader is smart intelligence, okay, and all those different things, okay, we got to share a story that has this repeatable pattern. Say, so, you guys want to learn that? You guys want to learn that? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's talk about that. So uh, I'm going to need some of my, uh, who's, who's a Star Wars fan in here? Only a few people. <laughs> I'm a Star Wars fan. Right? Okay, I, love, I personally love Star Wars. I've learned, I've, I, when I watch movies, my wife hates to watch movies because I ruin them. Because I've seen this repeatable pattern so many times I know it's going to happen. But we're going to use Star Wars as an, ex as an example. Okay, so again, we go through these cycles okay, as leader. There's a repeatable one. We go from a place that's known to unknown. Okay, and where we start is with ordinary life. Okay, so Luke Skywalker. Okay, what, what uh, planet did he grow up on? Tatooine. He was a farmer, right? With his aunt and uncle. Okay, and what was his inspiration? He wanted to be a fighter pilot. Right? You want to leave the farm and become a fighter pilot. And then one day, these droids come along. They have a message for the princess. Okay? What does Luke do? Fire. Okay? Originally says no. And that's what happens. If, that's what happens when you get this call to action. Okay? Let's go back and we get this call to action in our life to go from the known to the unknown. Okay, we either go back to ordinary life or else we find a mentor that will help us. And that's what most people do in their life. They just keep circulating in the same shit they've been doing over and over and over. Okay, having the same shit happen, the same results over and over and over. Okay, and we've all done this in certain parts of our life. So when we're sharing our story, okay, what was your ordinary life? What inspired you to go into what you're doing now? What did you do as a kid? What did you enjoy? So I'm working uh, with a company uh, from Idaho, okay, they're in HVAC, and what inspired him was he was always loved, like, just taking things and taking them apart, working on tools. And so he shares that as part of the story because it shares his passion, his purpose, and what he did as a kid, okay? Who was the mentor that you hired? Who, who taught you the things that you do? At some point in time, someone had to teach you something. Who did you learn for? Okay. And so Luke Skywalker goes back to the farm, and what does he find? The 
evil empire burns it, kills the Amazon. Okay? Sooner or later, life pushes you in the direction that you're meant to go. Okay? And sooner or later, you take it. And who is his mentor? Who is Skywalker's mentor? Obi Wan Kenobi, right? So the next day is he goes under the weights. I was a personal trainer. Everyone thought, oh, I'm going to get the shit now. I hired a personal trainer. What's the first thing I did? Here's your weight. Lift it. And okay, go under the weight. What was going under the weight for you? What did you struggle with? What did you learn how to, what did you need to learn how to fix or overcome? Okay, so what happened in New Hope? So Sky, Skywalker saves the princess, right? And then he blows up the Death Star. Okay, you get stronger. Where did you get stronger? Where at did you get stronger? What skills did you gain as you went through that weight? Okay, do you think your client wants to know that stuff? Okay, and then you experience more tests. Next one, Empire Strikes Back. Okay, there's always more tests in the hero's journey. What was your test? What was the thing that you needed to overcome? Okay, so for Luke Skywalker, what happened at the end of Empire Strikes Back? Back to Star Wars, 
Okay, Luke Skywalker defeated Darth Vader, right? What happens in the new trilogy of Star Wars? Where does Luke Skywalker? Can't be found. He's off on some planet hanging out. Okay, because he thought that what he was giving wasn't good enough, and he quit. So he had Ray come tell him, hey, I need you. And so now Luke Skywalker is on this whole new hero's journey. Okay, your journey never stops, guys. If you felt like you've climbed the first mountain, guess what? There's a second mountain. And if you felt like you've climbed the second mountain, guess what? There's a third mountain. Okay, there's always more things to do in your business to make it better to be able to give back to your customer. Who loves when they receive awesome feedback from customers? Okay, and for me, okay, my, my fiance's, uh, my wife's family, very well off. And I think sometimes they get a lot of people coming to them and asking for money. And I told them straight up, I never want a dime from you. Ever. But what would be more important and mean a lot more to me is if you sent me people for me to help. That would mean so much more to me than just be giving money. Okay? What you guys do matters. And some of you guys are sitting in this audience and you're going, well, I'm no speaker, you know, you know, I'm not writing a book. You know, why why does this matter to me? I don't have an extraordinary story. And some of the best stories are the most extraordinary. Yeah, I sit down with clients who say these things, I don't have a good story, I don't have this, I don't have that. And I listen to their experiences, I listen to the things they've done, the things they over overcame, the things that they've learned in their journey. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. It's incredible. Let's, let's get the story out there. Why don't if, instead of trying to sell people the first time they come to your web page, why don't if we started to share our story about why we got into it? Okay, who's ever heard the book Start With Why? Okay, you guys need to read that book. Okay, if you're a leader in this room, you must read that book, Start With Why. Who's read that book? Raise, raise your hand. Okay. Would you agree with me? You guys need to read that book, Start With Why. Okay, why communicates to the brain that's directly connected to human behavior. Why? It leads this emotion. Okay, so through our journey, okay, we can tell people our why through our story. We can tell people our way or our formula or our recipe for helping people through our story. Our story tells us who we work with. Our story also tells us what the transformation is. Those are the four W's of your brand. Why do you do what you do? What's the way that you do it? Who do you help? And what's the transformation when I hire you? Those are the four W's that your clients want, either consciously or subconsciously. Okay, and we can tell people that. I want to help people, right? And we can, we can tell people the facts, or else we can really sell them through the story. Because facts tell and stories sell. Okay, let's go deeper on this nerd shit. Okay, let's talk about some hormones. So who's heard of dopamine, oxytocin, and uh, endorphins? Endorphins. Okay, so who's heard of those hormones? Okay, okay, hormones. Okay, and I'm glad I'm talking to mostly a room full of men right now. This, this doesn't sound very good to a room full of women. Women, I apologize, but. When it's that time of month and those hormones are regulating women, do they change their behavior a little bit? Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that <laughs> Yeah, hormones affect not just women, but they affect men. And we can actually release hormones in our clients and customers through the power of storytelling. Okay, oxytocin, okay, that's our uh, trust hormone. Okay, the way we release that hormone Okay, is we share empathetic experiences, we empathize. What's the difference between sympathy and empathy? Okay, sympathy is, oh my gosh, I feel bad for you. Empathy is, holy shit, the same exact thing happened to me too. Okay, so the way I, I memorize is it, E, empathy, E, experiences. Okay, so if you want to really connect and build oxytocin with your, with your clients and customers, you got to empathize with them. Okay, 
endorphins, okay, the laughing hormone. Okay, maybe you have a funny part of your story that you want to share. If you can get a customer or client laughing, okay, it's almost game over, guys. Okay, get them laughing, get them releasing that hormone. That's why a lot of people love Trump. He says some funny shit, doesn't he? <laughs> We're gonna build a wall and they're gonna pay for it. Trump, you call women slobs, bats, pigs. Um, I at least said that about Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> right? So he shares, he shares this funny shit, and we're like, that's funny, okay? And so what we do is we, we connect to him, we, we, we release those endorphins, and it helps us connect to him. Okay, what was the, so oxytocin, uh, what's the other one that was it? Dopamine, okay? Dopamine is when we share something suspenseful, okay? So when it's suspenseful, we pay attention to it, we connect. Okay, and that's what your brand means. You need to connect with people. You need to build trust with people. And some people say people need to like your brand, but, but the biggest problem I see with brands in the world is you go for like. You go for like instead of love. Because I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want to upset anyone. I don't want to say anything. Okay, you're, you're, you have to be very specific in what you believe and what you don't believe. You have to go for love. Okay? You can't play both sides of the equation. You have to say what you believe. Okay? Don't go for light, go for love. Okay? Love, trust, connection. Okay? Those are the things that you build through your story along with why you do what you do, what's the way that you do it, who do you work with, and what's your transformation. Okay, what's the result when I hire you and you come into my, into my home or my business? Okay. You guys have stories, I promise you do. Everyone I talk to says, I don't have a story that's really going to sell my business. I promise you do. And so I just sit there and I listen. I listen to your life and I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated about the genius that you have. Everyone has inner genius in them. Okay, they just don't know how to communicate this with the world so people understand what they know. Okay, you have genius, okay? And everything that we do with our, the companies we work with, the athletes that we work with, okay? We help build their story. As soon as you start knowing a person's story, you start building those connections, love, trust, all those things that you want, okay? So we have a foundation called To The Next Generation Foundation. It's for young athletes that don't get an opportunity to play sports because of finances. If it wasn't for my mom making huge sacrifices, we wouldn't have been able to play sports when I was a kid. And I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for sports. My dad never wanted to get into coaching. Because, and I think the reason why he didn't want to get into coaching is because he didn't want parents to come at him, he didn't want to screw up, or whatever else it is. But I remember um, for the first 10 years of my life, my dad refused to coach. He didn't want to coach. You didn't want to do that. Has anyone coached Little League or the kids in here before? That's awesome. And I remember one day at a game, there was a kid on the team that was warming up, and everyone's played with this kid on the team, a kid that can't hit anything, can't throw, plays right field, plays the minimum amount of innings. His name was Cameron. Everyone has a Cameron on the team, right? I apologize if your name's Cameron. Okay. Anyways, he's warming up in the hole, and he looks like he's just swatting at fly, swinging the bat, and it's horrible, and the coaches gave up on him. Why would you focus on someone that's never gonna hit the ball? Why would you give attention to someone that's hit the bottom? That doesn't, doesn't make sense. So the coaches ignored him, they gave up on him. And my dad is over there helping him swing the bat. All right, get your elbow. Okay, let's work on the timer, let's work on the load, all these different things. So as I'm watching, I'm like, oh man, I really hope he gets a hit. I think that would really inspire my dad. So he gets up the bat and he strikes out. Right? Oh shit. So the next time he comes up in the hole, okay, my dad's helping again. Goes up the bat, up the bat, strikes out again. Okay? Over and over, game of the game. My dad never quit. My dad never quit. Kept helping him. Very last game. Very last at bat. My dad's still working with him. He gets two strikes on him. Here comes the next pitch. He winds up, he makes this huge, giant swing. 
and it all barely hits the bat and it dribbles down the line. And we're like, run, run. He didn't know what to do. He's never hit the ball. Run. So he started running to first. And he barely beats out the, the play at first. He was so happy. I've never seen someone so happy from a base hit in my entire life. And um, he started walking back to the dugout. We're like, Cam, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I, yeah, yeah you're, you need to run the bases. He didn't know what to do. He's never been on base before. And after that game, After that game, his parents walked up to my dad and said, thank you. Thank you for not giving up on my son. And the very next year, my dad decided to coach. And he ended up taking first place that year. And he always told us, visualize it, guys. Visualize it. Okay. It's not YOLO. It's not you only live your life once. I think you do twice. You first live it in your head through your stories, and then you actually live it in real life. Okay. Visualization is so powerful. We have 600 words going through our brain every minute, and we, we dream in stories. And my dad's story was this kid can be a great player if he gets the right help. And Cameron wasn't the best player on the team the next year, but he was an important player because my dad brought him from here to here. Guys, your story is so impactful. And as a leader, your goal of your story is to change other people's stories, change other people's identities about themselves. Okay, your story matters. And your story for other people matters. And I guarantee you there's someone in your life right now that's dying to hear a story about how you feel about them. Okay, give other people powerful stories to live up to. Don't give up on people. I believe the reason why I'm doing what I do today is because I've seen it work. I've seen what my dad can do. And it starts with your story as a leader. Okay? You have a story and I would love to help you with your story. I would love to connect with you and be here over the next couple of days. Um, I'd love to meet and see what you're up to. Okay? Uh, if you're on Instagram, I'd love to connect with you. If you want to follow me on Instagram and message me, so that way I can follow you back. It's Coach Travis Brady. Okay, All one word, Coach Travis Brady. Okay, if you uh, want to, so I have a podcast as well called Next Gen Coaching Chronicles, okay, where I shared pretty close to the same presentation um, on the podcast the other day. So if you want to share what I just talked about today, maybe with some friends, some clients, customers, or maybe some other people on your team, okay, it's Next Gen Coaching Chronicles, and I shared pretty close to the same presentation. Okay, send me a message when you guys connect. I would love to connect with you. Okay, if not in the next couple of days, at least connect you with you on Instagram. Okay, and I, I want to leave you with this last message. Okay, and, and I say this every time I speak, every time I, I do a video. Okay, this was with us with uh, Elena Cardone. We did a video series years ago. Okay, uh, my wife had the story that she wanted to help women become more comfortable with guns. So she reached out to Elena Cardone. We spent an entire day with Elena Cardone. And she's amazing. I love her. She, she is an ultimate badass. I, I have so much more respect just seeing her behind the scenes and what she does. And that's where your story starts, guys. It starts with behind the scenes. Things you do day in and day out. Okay, people pay attention to the way you live. Okay, and I want to leave you with be inspired. Okay, don't get motivated. Okay, we need to be inspired. Inspiration pulls us towards stuff. Inspiration is love. Be love. Be inspired for things in life. Be next gen. Be different. Be innovative. Be unique. Okay, what makes you different? I believe every single one of us has something unique that we can offer inside our business to make sure no one else is doing what we're doing. Okay, and lastly, the world needs you. The world needs you. The world needs to hear your stories and your experiences. Okay, so be inspired. Be next gen. The world needs you. Thanks, guys.